Sean, good evening to you. The president spoke by my unofficial count for about 67 minutes. The speech amounted to a Frankenstein composite of various stock speeches that he gives. Uh, perhaps the most newsworthy element was the announcement previewed earlier in the day that he will order the U.S. military on an emergency basis to build a seaport off the coast of Gaza for humanitarian aid there. In terms of assuaging voters about the age concern, there were some garbled words at times. Uh, the president was energized, as his aide said that he would be. There were two misstatements, one when he misspoke about the name of Lake and Riley, calling her Lincoln Riley. At one point, referring to his own American rescue plan, he said every American voted against it when he meant every Republican. Uh, he again called on Speaker Johnson to bring to the House floor those Senate measures on the border and Ukraine. This is a baffling use of presidential capital because the Speaker has now for months indicated that those measures have no future on the House floor. Uh, in short, it is unclear what this compilation of Mr. Biden's stock speeches will do to persuade swing voters. Perhaps it's equally unclear that there are any persuadable voters left, which is to say any voters who haven't made up their minds on Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Sean. James Rosen, thanks for joining us tonight. And now former senator of Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum, and former senator of Connecticut, Joe Lieberman, join us now. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you on here with us. Uh, first, uh, Rick, I want to go to you. What's your initial reaction to the uh, address? I think he accomplished some important things for him tonight. Uh, number one, he was very high energy. There's no question the president was amped up to give this speech. Uh, I don't think he faded to the end. I, you know, there was concern he wouldn't have enough energy through the whole thing. I think he had high energy throughout the process. He garbled a lot of words. He made some, he made some gaffes, four really uh, serious gaffes that I saw. But again, I mean, not horrible. I mean, it, and it didn't get worse as time went on. So on the, on the age issue, which to me was an important thing for him to accomplish, and I think he passed the test. Now, was it a great speech? It was a laundry list, I think uh, James pointed this out, it was a laundry list, uh, full s woke socialist, you know, I got your back trans people, I've got, you know, high on, a, 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 right up front was abortion, uh, you know, they, they hit all the cultural things that were really important to, to his base, it was very much a base speech, I have never, I've, I've been to 16 say the unions, Joe's been to more than I have. I have never seen a speech that partisan. I have never seen a speech that political. And I have never seen a speech where they had, he didn't have applause lines for everybody. I mean, yes. a, a, president, a president goes in there, and yeah, you can give a tough speech, and I've been in front of some tough speeches. But every president goes in there with the idea that, I'm, remember, Joe, Joe Biden was supposed to be the unity president. Right. He was supposed to bring us back together. He was supposed to be the nor bringing back to normalcy. This was anything but the norm for a State of the Union. And I, I saw two times, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I only saw two times where Republicans stood. One was to, to applaud uh, uh, John Lewis, mm -hmm. and the other was to, to talk about the hostages come, you know, getting yeah. back. That was it. There was no attempt at all to bring in the other side. In fact, he taunted the other side. Yes. He, he, went out, he, he, he actually tried to get them to engage him to, to show how tough he was. So this was the most political speech, I would argue, in the history of the State of the Union.